everybody. Welcome. Old Testament. A lot of books in the Old Testament. More books in the Old Testament than there are in the New Testament. Doesn't mean the Old Testament is better. Doesn't mean it's worse. But the thing is, there's so many things in the Old Testament that we, we just don't know and cover much. You know, we know about creation, Genesis 1 and 2. We know about Cain and Abel, Noah and the ark and the animals. We know about the Tower of Babel. We know Abraham or Abram, then Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, all these guys, and then Moses, the big man. But what about some of these texts that we don't think about much? Not that we don't care about them. It's just it's not like in the highlights of the Old Testament. You know, so I was thinking to myself as I was contemplating this, what should we start with? And I thought the best place to start with is numbers, numbers. Everyone loves numbers, numbers 21. So we're talking about Moses, talking about the children of Israel. We're talking about the bronze serpent. This is an awesome story. So, you know, the Israelites, they're traveling through the wilderness. And why are they going through the wilderness for so long when, you know, Egypt to Israel is just like right there, but they travel around? Well, God even said it. They're not ready to go yet because they'll be too terrified and they'll be defeated. So I'm going to make them walk around for a while, reset themselves and then go. So they're in the wilderness. And instead of resetting, being thankful, what do they do? They grumble, they complain, and they whine. Oh, God, why do you do this? We loathe, we don't have any food, and we loathe this worthless food. Wait a second. You just said you have no food. We loathe, I don't know. So what does God do to them? Does he give them a timeout? Does he say, go to the timeout chair and reset? No. He sends snakes to bite him. He sends poisonous snakes and bite everybody. It's hilarious. I'm sure if I was back there, I wouldn't think it was hilarious. But looking back, it is. So they bite everybody, and what they do is they go to Moses, please petition God to save us from this, because we're all dying. So what does God do? Well, he doesn't say, well, I'll take the snakes away. He doesn't say, well, I'll do abracadabra, and poof, the poison goes away. What he does is he tells Moses to put a bronze serpent on a staff and raise it up so everyone can see it. And if you look at it, you'll live. Don't look at it, you perish. So those who looked at it lived, those who didn't look at it perished. But this is the thing to focus on with it. The snakes are still there. Have you ever asked the question, well, why didn't God just do away with the devil? Why didn't he do away with evil? Well, he did on the cross. Jesus quotes Numbers 21 in John 3 when he says, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that all may have eternal life. So the snakes are always going to be in your life. You're always going to have that poison. You're always going to have that, that fear, that, that trepidation. You're always going to have the reality of sin. But we gaze to Christ upon the tree. We look to Christ, our bronze servant, that died for us in our stead. And by faith, clinging to Christ alone, we are rescued from the fate of the poisonous serpent, the devil. Rescued from the fate of sin. So take heart. And dig into Numbers 21. It's fun times. Bronze servant, salvation, John 3, Jesus. You get eternal life. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. What do you value? At Concordia University, Nebraska, we value the equipping of church workers for lives of service to both church and world. In a culture where our faith can often be met with derision, our world needs ardent Christian leaders to rise to the helm and steer the next generation of Christ followers into new territory. You have the God-given gifts. We have the tools to uncover and develop them. We are Nebraska's university with values.